Welcome back to You Asked For It. For those of you here for the first time, You Asked For It is one of my segments where I get questions or inquiries from my social media friends, followers, and fans regarding a situation or behavior they're trying to address with their dog. And this episode of You Asked For It is an inquiry from Carol from Facebook. Carol writes, how can you get your dog to behave with cats? And I, we had a little bit of back and forth. I wrote, slowly, but not all dogs and cats will jive. Carol goes on to explain, first time I've ever had a problem. And I continued, with the dog or the cat? <laughs> That's the issue, it's not always the dog's fault. Sometimes the cat can be a bit of a jerk. And Carol writes, it's with the dog. Her dog gets along fine with other dogs, but is a little too interested in the cat. So let's take a quick peek at a nice, slow and safe introduction with a dog and cat for the first time. Good boy, buddy. Good boy, Odin. Come on. Sit. Good sit. Good boy. What's up, Steel? Good doggy. So as you can see from the video clips I just showed you, it was a very controlled interaction between the dog and the cat and a couple of things of note. Obviously I had the dog on leash because I wasn't sure how the dog was going to react to the cat and I know how my cat is going to react to the dog. And being that this is the first time I had this particular dog around any cat in close proximity, safety always comes first. One of my challenges in this situation is I'm using my cat and my cat could be a bit of an asshole. <laughs> but at a safe distance, my cat will react accordingly and will choose flight over fight. And again, this is a controlled and very safe encounter. But what it does for me is if the dog shifts body language wise, those are some things I could pick up on so I can gather information so I could proceed further with an introduction or getting them in closer proximity to one another. And my cat's a little bit of a badass. He's been known to actually attack pit bulls. And that's no joke, he's actually attacked pit bulls in our old business up in New Jersey. He used to attack the pit bulls that would come into our store. So in my case, I have to be more careful with my cat than I do with the dog. But the moral of the story is this, you go slow. Take it slow, make sure the dog is on leash. If you have to have treats so you can get the dog's attention to perform obedience for you, you do that.
And on the cat side of things, you want to make sure the cat has somewhere to escape to if the cat is feeling uncomfortable. Now obviously this is the rule of thumb for the introduction. Let's fast forward. Let's say the dog is starting to become more comfortable with the cat and the cat more comfortable with the dog. You still want to have an escape route for the cat so the cat can escape to safety and the dog can't follow. So baby gates with one of those little cat doors that are embedded inside the doggy gate, that's a good option for you. Or maybe you have a door that you can leave ajar so the cat can squeeze through but the dog can't. You know, some kind of safety measure in place. And in case you haven't seen other videos of mine, anytime you are introducing your dog to a new situation, supervise, supervise, supervise. Don't get complacent. Don't assume that things are going to go a certain way. Always be prepared. Always have safety first. Now this is just one way to do an intro with a dog and a cat. Obviously there are other ways. Uh, you can have your dog in the crate and you can control your cat's approach to the dog's crate to see how the dog initially responds, which poses a challenge. Obviously, you know, the dog is confined. That could cause a little anxiety if any strange animal approaches her or his crate while they're in it. Uh, you know, but again, it is a safe measure to get that initial snapshot of how the dog is going to react to a cat. And the other option is to have the cat in a cat carrier or, a, you know, a cat in a big dog crate so you can have your dog on leash and approach the cat while it's confined to see how the dog reacts to the cat. And again, having the dog on leash is a good safety measure. And as usual, it's really tough to offer specificity on these issues when I don't know the animals involved, so sometimes I have to be a little more general. But hopefully the video clips I showed you in this particular episode can help give you some kind of tools at your disposal to start that introduction and start acclimating the dog and the cat to one another. And if and when you get to the point where the dog and cat can be loose together, just keep a couple of things in the forefront of your mind when you do this. Don't leave any of the dog's toys out. Don't leave any of the dog's food out. Don't leave the cat food out. Don't leave things out that can cause conflict between the dog and the cat. Think of it in terms of really controlling your environment. Make sure there's no environmental factors that could cause conflict between the dog and the cat. And when there's food or things like that involved, a lot of times it's more the dog that we have to keep an eye out for. But I've seen cats that resource guard their food, so don't underestimate the cats either. So I hope this helps. In a nutshell, take it slow, be safe, create controlled interactions at first, and slowly give them more room to work with each other. You know, just like in my videos, maybe first the hallway, then the living room, maybe more areas of the house. Take it slow, and when in doubt, safety first, and make sure that the animals have somewhere they can go to retreat if they're feeling stressed or anxious. And if anyone has any inquiries or questions about a situation that you're going through, feel free to drop comments below or hit me up on social media. And I'll see you guys next time on You Asked For It.